Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we explore the secret story of Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2, and try to make sense of what exactly its cryptic clues are trying to tell us. Before diving into theory talk, it's worth noting two things about the game itself. Firstly, Help Wanted 2 doesn't really have much in the way of a story. Rather, it's a collection of FNAF-themed VR minigames, just like its predecessor, the original Help Wanted. However, where Help Wanted 1 did contain a fair bit of story-related information, relayed to the player via a series of hidden audio logs, Help Wanted 2 contains only two brief cutscenes, neither featuring much in the way of dialogue. Rather than continuing the story of Security Breach and the previous Help Wanted game, this sequel seems to instead act as a vehicle to confirm our previous speculation on certain plot points from Steel Wars FNAF series. If we connect the dots and do a little theorising based on clues found throughout our adventure. Secondly, much like the original Help Wanted, I don't believe this game is telling a literal story. What I mean by this is that the events in this game aren't unfolding in real time with an actual protagonist, as we see in mainline titles. Instead, the imagery shown symbolises things happening throughout the modern FNAF timeline specifically in relation to Security Breach and Ruin. So, with this information in mind, let's recap the events up to this point. Here is my interpretation of the story so far. Help Wanted 1 introduced us to Glitchtrap, who we now know to be the Mimic and explained how this corrupt malware AI became sentient feeding off of information gathered from the scanned circuit boards of previous Fazbear animatronics during the creation of the VR game. Someone was definitely here during the night. It had to have been the client. I mean, they sent us that stuff in the first place with no explanation, told us to scan it, said it would expedite the process so we wouldn't need to program any pathfinding ourselves. It was just junk. Circuit boards and things like that. Look pretty old. Somehow though, there was usable code on some of it. It seemed to take hold by itself. Things started changing. One of these circuit boards belonged to Springtrap and contained the memory of William Afton, whose evil past then influenced the artificial intelligence, causing it to mimic Afton's behaviour and desires, therefore creating glitch trap. This entity then corrupted the mind of beta tester Vanessa and caused her to take on an alter form known as Vanny while under the Mimic's control. This is represented in typically cryptic FNAF fashion via a series of arcade minigames known as Princess Quest. In this game we play a blonde princess who symbolises Vanessa imprisoned within a glitching world full of rabbit-themed dangers. Vanessa, now under the control of Glitchtrap, became Vanny whenever the entity called upon her for assistance, and while under this control, infiltrated Fazbear Entertainment's newly found Mega Pizzaplex and spread the Mimic's AI into its systems. This causing the animatronics to become corrupted and attack poor Gregory, an orphan child who found himself trapped inside the building after hiding from security after hours. However, against all odds, Gregory, with the help of Glamrock Freddy, managed to free Vanessa from the Mimic's influence, and by the end of Security Breach, all three escaped the Pizzaplex unscathed. Well, aside from Glamrock Freddy, who now lives on as a head after a brutal encounter with a horde of corrupted staff bots. The Pizzaplex closed shortly after due to an earthquake that rocked the building. Yet another instance of Fazbear Entertainment's damage controlling and trying to hide their negligence. Anything to avoid a potential lawsuit. The building lay dormant for a long time and fell into a state of ruin. Later, a young girl named Cassie snuck into the derelict ruins of the Plex after being summoned there by her friend Gregory. But upon her arrival, she found he was nowhere to be seen. Cassie discovers a walkie-talkie which Gregory uses to contact her and explains he is trapped in a sinkhole at the bottom of the building and needs her help to escape. Uh, I got your message. Where are you? Help! Something grabbed me! It won't let me go! You have to find me! I'm trapped in the sinkhole under the raceway! 
As Cassie explored the ruins, she ran into a staff bot with rabbit ears who handed her the Vanny mask discarded by Vanessa at the end of Security Breach. Using this mask, she is able to see the world through different eyes and connect with an AI version of Helpy, who along with Gregory guides her through the building. While en route to Gregory's location, Cassie encounters a rabbit-themed AI known as Mexies, who attempts to stop her at every turn by summoning the various ruined animatronics. Cassie eventually managed to shut down Mexies and free Gregory from his prison behind a sealed wall in a sinkhole below the Mega Pizzaplex. Unfortunately, she discovered, too late, that the voice did not belong to her friend Gregory, but rather to the Mimic who now exists in the real world, transferred into the body of a disused endoskeleton. You're not Gregory. What are you? I... I... Gregory. Mexies was a security software designed by Vanessa to keep the Mimic bound and sealed within the depths of the Pizzaplex, so it could no longer cause harm to the outside world. By shutting Mexies down, the Mimic is able to spread its malware once more, now no longer bound to the confines of a computer network and living in the real world. The real Gregory gets in touch with Cassie and explains his friend has access to the building's maps, suggesting that this friend is Vanessa, an ex-employee of the Pizzaplex who escaped with him in the previous game. He guides Cassie to an elevator where she manages to escape the Mimic. However, as the elevator ascends, Gregory explains that he can't risk the Mimic escaping and so plunges Cassie to her doom. It is unclear if this is actually Gregory's doing or once again the trickery of the Mimic impersonating him. Well that's the story so far, now let's dig into how Help Wanted 2 helps confirm some of these theories and solidifies the story of the Security Breach games. We now know that the player avatar in the original Help Wanted symbolised Vanessa and her first interactions with Glitchtrap, aka the Mimic. So who does the protagonist of Help Wanted 2 represent? Well, based on the evidence at hand, it seems most likely that the person we are playing in this new game is none other than Cassie's father. Let's take a look at why we can come to this conclusion. During Help Wanted 2, players access a Faz wrench, which allows them to hack into a backroom where a Princess Quest arcade machine is located. This is our first clue as to the player's identity as if we remember back to Ruin, Cassie discovers a Faz wrench and makes mention of her father once owning one. A Faz wrench? It's just like my dad's. This dialogue suggests that Cassie's dad was once an employee of Fazbear Entertainment, working at the Pizzaplex. The second clue connecting Cassie's dad to the protagonist in Help Wanted 2 can be found during the Princess Quest ending. We locate a secret room where a bonnie mask can be retrieved from a chest. The sentence, this looks familiar, then appears on screen. In FNAF Ruin, when Cassie unlocks the lunchbox, we can see a description beside the item that reads, Bonnie was my dad's favorite. And when she picks up a bonnie plush, the description reads, Dad wouldn't tell me why they replaced Bonnie. So there is a predetermined connection between Bonnie and Cassie's father. Also, the fact Cassie uses past tense when referring to her father, using the word was instead of is, implies that he is no longer around and either died or disappeared. Now consider this, how exactly does Cassie know Gregory? My theory is that Cassie lost her mother and was under the sole care of her father, who then one day went missing himself. She then became orphaned and met Gregory at a local orphanage. This is reflected in the cutout we find in Ruin, where Gregory is consoling Cassie, perhaps because she had recently lost her father. We'll get to Cassie's father's disappearance when discussing the ending of Help Wanted 2, as I believe one of the endings explains exactly what happened to him. Finally, during the Phaser Blast minigames, the Carney speaks the following line of dialogue after completing each round. You look like you got kids. Win a prize for the little one! 
Now this suggests that the protagonist indeed has a child, and as few things in the FNAF verse are rarely a coincidence, the most likely connection is to tie the player character to Cassie, the last kid we played as in the previous mainline game. If we really want to go into conspiracy theory territory, we can even make the connection to Cassie's dad adopting Gregory. The Carney mentions kids, plural. So perhaps Cassie's father adopted Gregory, explaining how Cassie first met him. With the protagonist explained, let's take a look at another cryptic series of messages, this time coming from Candy Cadet. By feeding Faz coins into the change machine beside Candy, we are told two different stories. Here is the audio for story number one. Now I will tell you a story about a family that missed the most important opportunity in their lives. It was a limited time offer that included a family style pizza with all their favorite toppings. It also came with a side of fries, mozzarella sticks, extra large soft drinks and a toy surprise. It was only $49.99 while supplies lasted. They did not purchase the food and they all died. While very cryptic, Candy Cadet's first story alludes to the tale of the Afton family, explaining the tragic fate of William, Michael, Elizabeth, Crying Child and William's wife, who all met a fateful end. This eventually giving rise to the mimic, which replicated William Afton's behavior. Now let's listen to the audio for story number two. Now let me tell you a story about a young woman who, when she was little, was led into a dark forest by a witch and almost eaten. She had fallen for the friendly voice without discernment and was led astray. She had escaped before being thrown into the oven, but would have a scar for the rest of her life. When she had grown, she sought revenge on the witch, and entered the forest again willingly, this time with the confidence of age and experience. She was greeted at the mouth of the forest by a young boy who offered to help guide her through the darkness. She welcomed the help, and followed the young boy over the river, through the jagged trees, and toward a small house. Come the boy said. Press here before killing the witch. The young woman was tired and would kill the witch in the morning. She followed the boy into the house. The oven door closed. The witch would finally have her meal. My interpretation of the second fable is that it tells the story of Vanessa, who is referred to as the young woman. She was led astray by the mimic, referred to as the witch who posed as Tape Girl and then used Vanessa to escape the confines of a VR game and brainwash her into serving it. With the help of Gregory, referred to as The Boy, Vanessa managed to escape the Mimic's control, but would carry her painful experience forevermore. She then returned to the ruined Pizzaplex with Gregory to seal away the Mimic using the Mexi's AI. However, this may have led to her downfall. The end of the story could allude to an unknown plotline, where Vanessa falls victim to the Mimic once more. For now, this is my best interpretation of this audio. So it seems Candy Cadet's purpose by telling these stories is to tie William Afton to the Mimic and confirm that Vanessa and Vanny are indeed the same character, controlled by the Mimic and now working with Gregory to combat it. To conclude this Story Explained video, let's tie everything up neatly with a look at both of Help Wanted 2's mysterious endings. In the first ending we witness an animatronic regeneration chamber appear on the main stage, and from it a human hand emerge. After this, a group of murderous staff bots materialize and jump scare the player. When our vision returns, we activate within an animatronic, who then passes Cassie the Vanny mask. After the credits roll, we can see that this was the very robot who handed Cassie the mask during the story of FNAF Ruin. So, what does this mean? 
After unlocking the back room containing the Princess Quest arcade machine, we are prompted to remove our mask, which we discover is none other than the Vanny mask itself. We then learn that the functional pizzaplex we believe to be working in is in fact the ruined remains. If we take a look at the game's description outlined by Steelwall Studios over on the PlayStation blog, we can see it describes the protagonist as the last employee left working at the Mega Pizzaplex. We theorised that this person was Cassie's father. So with both of these pieces of information, we can deduce that Cassie's father was the last employee at the Pizzaplex and went missing while working there after the place closed down. The ending then tells us that Cassie's dad disappeared after discovering the Mimic's recharge station within the sinkhole. The one Burn Trap emerges from in Security Breach's secret ending. We even see the sinkhole appear within the main room after removing the Vanny mask. It seems the Mimic used infected staff bots to overpower Cassie's father and then began controlling him with the mask in a bid to escape. This signified by the vision of the staff bot handing over the Vanny mask to Cassie. The Mimic using the child to free it with the hope of turning her into the next Vanny. The second ending can be unlocked by accessing the Princess Quest arcade machine. After playing Princess Quest for a short while, the player discovers a key which unlocks a room. This then allows the princess to enter the Vanny mask and appear before the player in augmented reality. After touching the player, the princess transfers them inside the game, where they take up the sword and continue the adventure in first person. At the end of the stage, we meet the king, who exchanges the Vanny mask for a glitch trap plush. Now if we think back to Help Wanted's secret ending, we remember that this is the same plushie that the Mimic was first contained within, symbolising how Vanessa, once under its control, took its code from the VR game and then transferred it over to the Mega Pizzaplex in Security Breach. After receiving this plushie from the King and then ascending an elevator, we encounter a giant version of Vanny, who gets us to hand over the plushie to her, which then transforms into Glitch Trap who is then crushed between Vanny's palms. To me this symbolises Vanessa breaking free from the Mimic's control. The fact she remains within the Vanny costume symbolises her use of this identity in the Mexi's security software she designed to contain the Mimic within the ruined Pizzaplex. Vanessa is using the rabbit iconography against the Mimic, who once used the same iconography to imprison and enslave her a fitting way to combat such a malicious entity. This is something we had actually previously theorised in our Story Explained video for Ruin, so it's nice to see it seemingly confirmed here. But with that said, we wrap up this look at the story of Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2. As I mentioned at the top of this video, rather than provide new story beats, it seems the scenes we experience within this new VR game are instead included to provide symbolic context to the events of the previous recent FNAF games, most notably the events of Help Wanted and the Security Breach series. But what do you think? Well let me know in the comments section below, and if you enjoyed this video remember to leave a like and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.